Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Slows Wrestling Show. Your source for all things wrestling is sports entertainment. Live from Palm Harbor, Florida. Coming up, my experience at ACW American Combat Wrestling. NXT results. AEW results. My favorite fall wrestling events from the past. Fans at WWE shows getting reprimanded for AEW shirts. Why the CM Punk rumors need to stop floating around and more on the Slows Wrestling Show. Welcome back to the Slows Wrestling Show. Your source for all things wrestling and sports entertainment. Now I'd like to talk about my experience at ACW Wednesday night. So I met the promoter of ACW and a few of their wrestlers two or three weeks ago. And ACW is the longest running wrestling promotion in Florida since 1991. And everyone there is just very, very respectful and down to earth. And the setup and overall environment of the venue is just amazing. The golf view, I love the Golf View Event Center. I think it's a very cool place to put on wrestling shows and show uh, crowds how a wrestling show runs. And I'm looking forward to working more with ACW and learning as much as I can about the sports entertainment business no matter what angle I, I am in. It doesn't matter if I'm doing backstage, commentary, uh, ring setup, uh, anything. It, it doesn't matter what I'm doing. It's like I just ha I'm trying to learn as much as possible so that I can get my foot in the door any way I can in the bi big wrestling in the wrestling business. Now here are the AEW results for this week. Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara defeat Adam Hangman Page and Kenny Omega via pinfall. Pac defeats Trent via submission. Private Party defeats The Dark Order via pinfall. Emi Sakura and Jamie Hayter defeat Rio and Shauna via pinfall. And Sean Spears defeats Brandon Cutler via pinfall. Now here are the NXT results for this week. The OC versus Tommaso Ciampa, Matt Riddle, and Keith Lee ends in a no contest. Pete Dunn defeats Damian Priest via submission. Tanera defeats Santana Garrett via pinfall. Shayna Baszler, the champion, defeats Dakota Kai via submission in a non-title match. Angel Garza defeats Tony Nese via pinfall to become number one contender for the NXT Cruiserweight Championship. And Dominic Derzakovic defeats Isaiah Swerve Scott via pinfall. Now, here are my favorite fall pay-per-views from the past in wrestling. Number one, Halloween Havoc 1998. Number two, Fall Brawl 1998 War Games. Number three, In Your House Buried Alive 1996. And number four, Bad Blood in Your House 1997. So why I picked these four pay-per-views from the past is because of their significance in wrestling history as well as who my favorite wrestlers are from those past pay-per-views. And some of them are like Ric Flair, Goldberg, Diamond Dallas Page, Hawk Hogan, um, Johnny B. Bad, a lot of different guys from the, early, from the early and late 90s. And... My favorite match watching was Undertaker versus Mankind because without a doubt it was one of those violent matchups where you knew someone was not walking out on their feet. You knew somebody was going to get seriously hurt during one of those matchups because they literally go to war. They literally went to war in that physical matchup and they just tore each other apart. And my favorite classic match from Halloween Havoc is Goldberg versus Diamond Dallas Page. And because it's, it was one of those matches where you thought Diamond Dallas Page was going to take out a victory. You thought he had a chance against Goldberg. But ultimately, Goldberg would turn around and retain the championship. And why I picked Bad Blood 1997 is because of Kane's debut. This is when Kane first appeared against Shawn Michaels, broke through the cage, and just started beating the hell out of him, choke slammed him, went like this, and the fire came up through the post inside the cell. That was a cool moment, and it's one of my favorite, favorite moments in wrestling history. Now I'd like to talk about something I saw on the internet last week. 
So fans attending WWE events wearing AEW shirts are getting reprimanded and forced to buy a WWE product and put a WWE shirt on at shows. And I think that this is really unprofessional for WWE to treat their fans of any kind like this, especially people who are paying to come to these shows. And, and I understand why WWE is doing this, and it is to keep AEW from marketing from their shows. And I believe fans should be allowed to wear whatever they please, no matter what wrestling company it is, and where they're, no matter where they're coming from as well. And that this is another reason why wrestling fans do not attend WWE shows or pay-per-views. Because they know that they're, they're just going to get reprimanded for some bullshit. And it sucks. I, it really does. I wish there was some way for fans to just come in and be allowed to wear whatever they want. Like, I don't know why WWE cares so much about it. And I think this, I think this needs to change. Now I'd like to talk about the CM Punk rumors of him wrestling again. So I don't understand why this keeps coming up. CM Punk made it clear he never wants to perform inside a wrestling ring again. And it's because he's, it's something he doesn't enjoy anymore. And he said so on a podcast and in multiple interviews. And fans need to realize the reality that he just wants to do so, some small work, no matter if it's offered from WWE or AEW. And I think he should be in, in a commentary role for WWE. And I think his skills... And experience to be a wrestling commentator would help him based on his in-ring career. And if that's what he wants to do, I would want to see him on SmackDown doing commentary. And it's a matter of if and how this would happen in the future. I don't know if it's going to happen for, for sure. Uh, we're just going to have to wait and see what WWE wants to do. And But CM Punk did say... The only way he would come back is if WWE offered him an amount of $25 million or more to get back in the squared circle. That's the only way he would come back. And that's, uh, that's, I don't think WWE has that kind of money right now because they spent money on a new studio and everything. And I just don't see CM Punk coming back at all. I really don't. I will take a break, but when we come back, New Japan results, Shane McMahon update, Adam Rose's new look, Raw results, should Randy Orton leave for AEW, should WWE offer CM Punk $25 million to wrestle again, and my top four favorite wrestling stars in Florida, and more on the Slows Wrestling Show. Welcome back to the Slows Wrestling Show. Your source for all things wrestling and sports entertainment. Now, here are the New Japan results. Eight-man tag team match. Clark Connors, T-Time, TJP, and Volador Jr. defeat Jushin Thunder Liger, Taguchi, Tiger Mask, and Yura Romura. Tag team match. Bullet Club, El Fantasmo, and Taiji Ishimori defeat Chaos, Robbie Eagles, and Rocky Romero. Six-man tag match. Evils, Sonata, and Shingo Takagi defeat Suzuki Goon, Lance Archer, Minoru Suzuki, and Zack Sabre Jr. Tag team match Hiroshi Tanahashi and Kota Ibushi defeat Chaos, Okada, and Yoshihashi. Singles match Tetsuo Naito defeats Tai Chi and Super Junior Tag League 2019 final match Rapungi 3K Sho and Yo defeat Suzuki Goon El Desperado. And Yoshinobu Kanamaru. Kenta defeats Tomoro Ishii. IWGP Junior Heavyweight Title Match. Will Ospreay defeats Bushi. And the IWGP Intercontinental Title Match. Jay White defeats Gato, with, with Gato. Defeats Hiroki Goto. Now here's an update on Shane McMahon. According to E-Wrestling News. Shane McMahon is not expected back on WWE TV. Because he was written off. I respect Shane McMahon for everything he's done in wrestling, but I think it was time for him to step off WWE TV, even after performing for so many years. Hopefully, we will see him helping people in development in their wrestling and storylines in the future, 
But I think the storylines with Shane just got really tiring very quick because fans lost interest in his character as time went on. And he was good for a while when WWE brought Shane back in, but now there, there's no need for new material with him. And hopefully we'll see him doing some stuff backstage for WWE in the future. Now, according to Wrestling Inc., Adam Rose has bulked up and made a new look for himself and is at 258 pounds. So I really like this new look of Adam Rose, and he looks much more better physically in shape than before and looks shredded. So if he's going to return to the wrestling ring big time, he should go to AEW and work with Tony Khan, who is doing a fantastic job with the company so far. But as far as Adam Rose goes, I think he should wrestle again soon. I don't know when he's going to sign a contract with any company, but I would like for him to sign with AEW. Hopefully one day soon. I don't know. We're just going to have to wait and see what happens there. Now I'd like to talk about Randy Orton. Should he leave WWE for AEW? So I think he should the way WWE has been going. And who I think he should join up with in AEW is John Moxley. I think that would be amazing. A tag team with Randy Orton and John Moxley against someone like the Dark Order or Sean Spears and somebody else. And I think he should be in a heated feud over there because that would be amazing. We've seen what Randy Orton can do when he's, when he's in heated rivalries. And he just literally delivers damage and destruction at every corner. And that's why I like him. That's, I, I, that's why I enjoy watching Randy Orton go to work. Because he's one of the true veterans of WWE and wrestling as a whole. Now I'd like to talk about CM Punk. Should WWE offer him $25 million to wrestle for them? And I think they should because it would open up the possibility of many great matches, including Seth Rollins versus CM Punk or CM Punk versus Kane Velasquez. And that would spike ratings up for Raw or SmackDown, depending on which show they would land him on. But it all depends on if WWE wants to go with that kind of money for him. And as I said earlier, he really does not want to wrestle again. So I don't know in this situation how else they could convince CM Punk to wrestle in the squared circle again. Now here are my top favorite four wrestling stars in Florida. Number one, Stephen Frick. Number two, Troy Hollywood. Number three, Fabu Andre. And number four, Jarrett Diaz. So I listed these performers because of how great they are at their promos and wrestling. And I could see all four of them joining a promotion such as TNA Impact, NXT, AEW, and New Japan in the future if they keep going and working hard the way they have been. And I'm excited to see what's in store for all of them because they literally are spectacular performers and they know exactly what they need to do to enter entertain the crowd. And I'm looking forward to see what the future holds for all four of these guys because they are they 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 define wrestling and I I wish them all the best to keep going and strive for that success to be the best. Now I'd like to talk about my promo with Jared Diaz. I think I did an amazing job and that I received good feedback on Instagram and Twitter when I posted it. And I'm excited to see what the future holds for me as a backstage reporter because I'm not used to being backstage much of the time. The, the, more, the main thing that I want to do is be a commentator for wrestling. But the only way that's going to happen is if I make my way up and warm up into it and just keep getting repetitions and practice. That's, that's the only thing I have to keep working with and keep working on. And anything can happen in wrestling depending on how you pay your dues, how nice you are, how respectful you are, um, how just like just how polite you are and be, be, uh, doing what you need to do to get these opportunities and build up to that point. So hopefully, I know my future is bright. I know there's a lot in store for me. 
And I can't wait to keep doing many more promos and backstage stuff. So I'm really excited about that. Now here is AEW and NXT's cable ratings from over the last month. Since the beginning of the Wednesday Night Wars, ratings for NXT have not been very good in the 18-49 age demographic. While they pull in a decent viewership head-to-head -head with AEW Dynamite, NXT has been averaging a low .2 rating since October. It seems that NXT is lacking the younger audience that's important to getting a good cable rating, as AEW Dynamite seems to be doing much better in that category. So, this is not good for NXT right now, who normally does well with viewership. I think that NXT and the main roster invasions will help with boosting the ratings for every show on WWE, like Raw, SmackDown, and NXT. And AEW is doing much better with their ratings when it comes to their audience because they are changing things up. They are mixing things up every week and they are changing the match cards around. And they're trying to add new things every week to see how the audience reacts to it. And so far, the audience has been reacting very well to it. And that's why I think AEW is doing very well with that. And it's it's going to take a lot of work to see what how it's going to take a lot of work to see how NXT and WWE Raw and SmackDown combine go head to head. That's going to do it for this week's episode. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at Show Slows and stay tuned for updates and more on Facebook.com slash Show Slows. From Palm Harbor, Florida, I'm Alex Slows saying goodbye for now. Have a good evening, everybody.